After several problems with the first patient that made the Neuralink chip lose 85% of its signals, the company has now officially confirmed that they have successfully put the chip in a second patient. This time, many improvements were made to the new version of the chip. Is it safe to use for a long time? What are the risks after making these changes to the chip? Explore all about it now with Neuralink, Neuralink's second patient. After trying the first patient, now more than seven months later, we have exciting updates about the second patient. Elon Musk recently shared these updates in a long eight-hour video. Like the first patient, Nolan Arbaugh, this second patient was also paralyzed due to a spinal cord injury from a car accident. It seems that Neuralink might give this person a new chance at life, just like it did for Nolan. The second patient's treatment went really well, but Elon Musk kept their name a secret for now. He only shared a little bit of information with LaFredman and said he didn't want to jinx it, but the results look very promising. The new chip has lots of signals and is working great. They made some changes to the Neuralink device after learning from problems they had with the first chip used on Nolan. The first chip had 64 threads, and each thread was super thin, thinner than a hair, with 16 electrodes each, which added up to 1,024 electrodes. But for the second patient, the chip was designed even better to work more efficiently and last longer. Elon said the new chip would have 100 run 8 threads, but each thread would have only 8 electrodes. He believes this change could double how much information they can handle if they place the threads just right. They also put the threads deeper into the brain this time, about 8 millimeters deep, compared to 3 to 5 millimeters for Nolan. Deeper threads mean they are more secure and can still work well even if they move a little. This is a big improvement because in the first chip, many threads got loose and they lost about 85% of them, which reduced how well they could pick up signals from the brain. Putting the threads deeper might be riskier, but it means the chip can do its job better. The team also learned to manage air pockets in the brain better during surgery because these can cause the threads to pull back. They are taking extra care to avoid gaps and keep everything tight and close to the brain, which should help a lot. Neuralink had to cancel their plans to do this surgery in June because of some medical issues, but they ended up doing it quietly and only talked about it recently. Elon Musk was really pleased with how the surgery went. He said they have 400 working electrodes now, which isn't all of them, but it's still a lot. Even though they haven't used all 1,024 possible electrodes, having about 40% active is a good start. And right now, about half the threads are working in the second patient's brain. Nolan, the first patient, had some electrodes move out of place, but he could still set records using the brain-computer interface, BCI, with just 10 to 15% of his electrodes working. Neuralink fixed some problems with software updates, which really helped. If they can get 90 to 100% of the electrodes working for future patients, they'll be able to do even more. This first result of having 400 working electrodes in the second patient is really promising. They are also improving how the chip reads brainwaves to make sure even if some electrodes come loose, the chip can still work well without needing more surgery. Elon Musk has big plans for Neuralink. He believes they will keep improving the chip, adding more electrodes, and making it better at processing signals. These electrodes pick up signals from brain cells and send them to the implant's electronic devices, which then send the data wirelessly to an app on a computer or another device. This is how patients can control things just by thinking. How did the second patient's implant go? Actually, the new generation of implants has gotten better but the way they put it in the brain hasn't changed much from the first patient. They did go deeper this time and used more threads, according to Dr. McDougall. The doctors start by cutting the skin on top of the head. They peel it back like you would open a car's hood. Then they make a small round hole about one inch across in the skull, take out a piece of bone, and open up the brain's protective layer to show the brain to the Neuralink robot. This robot is really good at its job. It carefully picks up tiny things, much smaller than a hair, called electrodes. Then it places them into the brain, making sure they go in the exact right spot and at the right depth, without hitting any blood vessels on the brain's surface. After the robot finishes placing the electrodes, a human doctor comes back to place the implant into the skull hole, covers it up, and screws it down to the skull. Then, 
they sew the skin back together. The whole process takes a few hours. During the surgery, the surgeons cut into the skin where the brain controls hand movements. Dr. McDougall explained that if you're an expert piano player, this part of your brain is very active while you play, and it's known as the hand knob. Even patients who are quadriplegic and can't move their fingers still think about moving them, and this part of the brain still gets active, he said. These details are part of what Neuralink's future implant plans are based on. Neuralink's future implant plans. Even with some problems, Neuralink has over a thousand volunteers ready for more surgeries. Elon Musk hopes to put his chip into eight more patients by the end of the year, but they still need approval from the authorities. It's amazing how fast Neuralink is working to help lots of people. Remember the Blindsight product Elon mentioned on X? That's also in Neuralink's plans. Blindsight could help blind people see, even those born blind. Right now, they are testing it on animals to make sure it works well before they try it on people. Blindsight tries to help blind people by targeting the back of the brain, called the visual cortex, which is part of seeing. The new chip, called the Blindsight chip, will have 1,024 electrodes that touch the nerve cells in a part of the eye. This helps the brain see images by mimicking light signals. These images won't be as clear as normal eyesight, which is very hard to achieve, but they will help blind people recognize things around them. Elon Musk said that at first, the pictures might look like old video game graphics, but they could get even better than normal eyesight later on. If the chip doesn't work as hoped, they might use a camera to send images to the brain. The camera would send data to a phone, and the phone would change this into signals that the chip sends to the brain. This could let people see what's on the phone. This idea is a bit like virtual reality and needs a lot of research. Before ABA got his chip, he used a stick in his mouth to use a tablet. Now, he can just think about what he wants to do on the screen, and the chip does it. He said the chip makes him more independent and less dependent on others. The second patient is expected to do even better than the first because Neuralink has learned a lot from past mistakes. Elon Musk thinks Neuralink brain chips are the best way for humans to keep up with advanced AI in the future. He imagines that one day, using Neuralink might let someone see in ways we can't now, like seeing different types of light like ultraviolet or infrared. Musk also said Neuralink could help fix damaged nerves, help people with seizures, and improve memory. He wants the chip not just to fix problems, but to make people's natural abilities even better. Neuralink has had some big issues this year, including a lawsuit from a former employee who said the work environment was bad. They also faced criticism for how many animals were dying in their tests. As they try more experiments, they'll have to fix these problems and show that their chips can really help people. This year's successful second chip shows a big step forward in brain technology, which could change how we treat paralysis and other brain problems. Neuralink is working to make their technology better by learning from the first tests and showing good early results. This could change how we treat brain problems and even improve how we think and interact with machines. Now, we want to hear from you. What do you think about Neuralink and their update on the second patient? Please share your thoughts in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and click the bell so you don't miss our videos. We appreciate your feedback and the time you spent watching. Thanks for watching and we hope to see you again soon. Stay safe and take care.